Hi guys, Retro Trek Ralph here. I've got another Eagle Moss review for you. Got these for the post today. These are the um, is it issue 140 of the official Starships collection. So, wow, we're getting as far as 140. This is, um, yeah, going beyond. This is the Federation Tug. So this is, well, you could run out, run out on this anyway, because I have got I know a little bit about this. So let's get this unbagged. I think I said before, it's, it's kind of strange that Eagle Moss have started sending these out in the bags when before we didn't. But then again, before we did get a, uh, a flat magazine, which isn't a major issue, we can fold it down eventually. So, um, yeah. Federation Tug. Let's see. Holding the garage today. Let's see what the magazine has in store for us for today. Right, showing you um, lights off. There you go. Front page there of the uh, Tug. If you don't recognise this, I'll tell you why in a minute. Launch 24th century, 90 metres long, maximum warp 6. So, Tug specification, we hang it onto the back where these nacelle parts are what side of the nacelle parts on the uprights you possibly think it may have been older than the 24th century but right I'm going to see if I can zoom in on here this is the only picture that there is of this ship it's pulling the USS Fredrickson after a, um, what was it, it was a battle at the end of series five on um, Deep Space Nine. This is the episode one of series six, the um, a Time to Stand episode. And there's the Klingon ship there, and there's the, um, it's, yeah, that's how much I'm zoomed in. The, um, the Peregrine class, a few of the Federation Klingons after they'd lost Deep Space Nine. But this is the only time it was ever in. Just one little scene, one little section. If I can find it and stick it in, I will do now. If I haven't, then yes. But it's just one or two seconds at the beginning of the episode. But that's the only thing you've seen this from. But it kind of looks green. So it kind of doesn't look like a Federation one. And I think that, is that the, um, without the Federation tugs, used to be after a bit of salt, yeah. To, just stuck in the middle of nowhere, to be honest, if they didn't have any tugboats. But, but it makes kind of sense. A lot of this is in the Navy tradition anyway, American Navy. Where the naming of the ships and the, how they, they operate. So why wouldn't they have tugboats? So it looks like on here you've got two massive, you'd guess, two massive tractor beam emitters so they can at least pull the ship, warp, warp engines, God knows what, docking port possibly, to try and get on. I mean, this was obviously a kit bash ship. And I'll go through that in a second, if it doesn't already say anything. There's to do with the Ketrasil White Depot, I think they actually lost the um, well, lost the battle on that or something like that. Doug Drexler. He can make some damn good digital art. Okay, why show the... I'm just wondering why they show the Enterprise B. Oh, oh it's the um, Doug Drexler helped to design that one. Looks like the inside of the um, Defiant. Yeah. Again, like with everything with these, if you like the magazine, if you like the model, go buy it. I'm not here as a full... Re you have to read this, and that's your um, fix for Star Trek over and done with. Go and buy it. This, this, this is quite good. Right. Next issue we've got is the uh, Vulcan to power. I think that was only one episode of Next Generation. It was in the um, Unification, the Spock episode. They were smuggling weapons through with um, Vulcan ships. Right. Before getting any further, let's address the elephant in the room here, right? <sighs> These are Voyager nacelles. Oh, um, pylons. Exactly the same as the Voyager curve bit there, everything, this, even this bit that connects into, because these are kit bashed from kits that, that were laying around from Star Trek stuff. So that is definitely a um, Voyager from the Revel, Revel kit line. This, on the other hand, 
is not Federation at all. Because this ship goes that way, which is kind of weird because it makes it look like it goes that way, but then the nacelles point that way. These, I am sure that these are from the Romulan Bird of Prey. They've just been painted Federation colours, blue instead of green, and then red instead of green. I'm positive they're from Romulan Bird of Prey. Rest of it, maybe it's a big sensor pod from something. I mean, they've obviously got a lot more kit bashing that they can do more than what I could. I could get a few model kits together, they could get some proper decent stuff together. Spend a fortune on but it's it's just a mishmash of a lot of kits. Which it served a purpose to tow the um Fredrickson. So enough of the magazine. If you want it, go buy it. If not, let's have a look at the magazine the the yes the model itself. Let's get a light back on for this shall we? Right. Took 0501-A slash B. As always, in she goes. Right. This is quite large, to be honest. I'm quite impressed in the size of this. Hmm. I mean, size-wise, yeah, it's quite big on the hand there. So let's get a pretty much good close-up view of this. Can't see what is the bridge. That looks like another docking port similar to that one so maybe able to um, connect a few together to uh, engage the warp drives together and you got the side view it's definitely I mean, you can definitely see the the influence on on the Voyager that's not a Voyager n nacelle definitely I'm sure it's a Federation no a, a Romulan sorry these arms are cells they look like just I don't know, just just kind of... They must be from a kit. It'd be a lot easier if you were on a Star Trek kit. But I don't remember anything like this. Just a few bolts, maybe. Connected together. Underneath some nice little um, Aztec patterns on the bottom. Rear, I don't know. Thrusters, possibly. I think they're easy, um, that's a, cold in the garage, so this is even colder. That's a metal part underneath it. That might be another metal part on top. Now it feels colder. Yeah, they're holding the underneath size metal. The rest of it's plastic. But actually, I was fearing the worst on this because it just doesn't seem to look like anything in particular. But um, it is what it is. I mean, I suppose technically you could maybe attach this to the bottom of a of a ship, and then off you go. Even that the reasons why the um, these sections are flat, even though the model kit, I know the model kit is flat because I've made that myself, made the kit. I think these actually go into the, the um, it was the pointed, these go into the nacelles. So this side here would have the um, the bar going through it, so you could um, tilt it up and down with the Voyager went into warp, but that attached straight into the warp engine. But definitely, definitely they're Romulan. But why not? Why not, to be honest? A little bit, is that a scratch there? Can't tell. Might be marked on there already. Yeah. I've been dropped on production line. Not bad. This is another Federation ship, at least, anyway. Which I think we're, we're really drawing the bottom of the Federation ships now, anyway. There can't be many left to do. I mean, on the future, I think there's... Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'll look on what's coming up next on Eagle Moss. We've got... Tapau, obviously. We've got Promethean, Battlecruiser, Merchantman. I'm actually looking forward to the Merchantman, because that's the the um, trade, trade guy sort of ship from Star Trek Three. Never seen that anywhere. Uh, Tin Man, which is Gum 2. Nightingale, which is a Peregrine class. Fasarius, which is from um, one of the first original series episodes. Baron's Raider, which is from, um, oh, there was a Picard episode, I think it was, was it, not Nemesis, Genesis, yeah, went, uh, went rogue, Gambit, there you go, got it eventually. So yeah, that's one of the upcoming ones at least anyway for the next few couple of months. 
But yeah, I quite, I quite like that. It's kind of, yeah, what you could do. If I made that myself, you'd probably laugh at me. But this was actually in partnership with a bit of a, an idea of what exactly it is, so... Yeah, okay. That's fine for me. Good little strip. Like I said, the size-wise, kind of palm of the hand sort of size. Usually most go to kind of the length, but not the width of the hand. This kind of goes to the full width. So you got, yeah, not too bad. It's not the best, but it's definitely not the worst, but it is kind of, it is canon, which is kind of more than what some ships in the Eagle Moss line have been lately. They've just done complete fantasy ones. But I am looking forward to the Bonaventure and the um, Enterprise F, just to um, see those and, and see what exactly they like. I mean, they're obviously not canon because they're not part of a series, but it's, it's all that. I hope that they're quite good. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. If you did, like, consider subscribing, consider being a Patreon, consider donating things to the um, to my tech channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye for now.